Imagine a 14-year-old kid and then a PhD scientist. Once you've pictured each of these, odds are that you're thinking of two pretty different people. Of course, it's in our realm of thinking that the 14-year-old could become a PhD scientist, but that would take 15 plus years and a whole lot of expensive schooling. But what if these two individuals, the 14-year-old and the PhD scientist, what if they could be doing the exact same research? In the age of the internet, the 14-year-old with PhD-level thinking is absolutely possible. And that's largely due to the fact that research information, once confined to the university lab, is now just a keystroke away for any of us with an internet connection. This immediate accessibility to knowledge is leveling the scientific playing field by putting information into the hands of anyone who is hungry for it. Just think that 20 years ago, research information was confined to the lab, and it was really a huge hassle to get access to it. You had to make a trip to a campus library and show your ID and affiliation, which then granted you access to flip through all the periodicals and publish research. And forget contacting scientists. You'd write a letter, send it through the mail, and correspondence, if it happened at all, could take weeks. But today, with near real-time communication, and so many passionate scientific aficionados, as well as professors and labs, all sharing their discoveries and ideas online, we're being exposed to more and more ideas, news, innovations. And because of this, we can now learn so much more. A search engine can make us an expert on anything we're interested in. Research papers, every single day, more and more research papers are becoming available to the public. And online courses can now turn our computers into classrooms. Our screens can also be our universities. Which brings me to this simple prediction that some of the greatest innovation we have yet to see will come from non-scientists, kids and teens. Why this group, you might be wondering? Well, first of all, it's sheer numbers. Every second, seven new minds are logging onto the internet for the very first time. That's more than half a million new users every single day. And, well, many of these can be as young as elementary school students. Also, teens spend a ridiculous amount of time online, an average of seven and a half hours every single day. And though much of this time might be spent playing internet games or web chatting while surfing the web, we are inevitably um, exposed to new ideas and concepts, and they might just see how to apply one idea to another idea, and then it all just clicks. Also, it no longer matters where we're from or what our occupation is. Access to knowledge is being democratized, and with it, science. Because of this, we're really able to do things that we haven't been able to do before. Non-scientists have a completely different mindset than um, the scientist does. They don't, aren't trained to think in terms of grants or hypotheses or really worry about what their academic advisors might say. It's because their thinking isn't shaped by the training of 100-year-old academic institutions that they're able to make discoveries that scientists do not. And so where is this all going now? All of us have access to resources, but what will be the thing that separates innovators from non-innovators? I think the key to this will be mindset. Mindset is the reason why I see so much potential in our kids and teens. We are a group that's usually dismissed as immature or inexperienced, but that's the exact reason why we're so special. The power of the young mind is its daring capacity that we won't take, you can't do that, as an answer. We're wired to think in terms of potential rather than restrictions or boundaries. And being completely naive to the complexity of the problem is the exact reason why we're able to go out and solve those problems. When it comes to success, I think Mark Twain said it best. In order to be successful in life, you need two things, ignorance and confidence. <laughs> and that was me, ignorantly confident, at the age of 15, when I decided I wanted to do research. I thought research would be the coolest thing in the world, that I would get to discover things that nobody else has ever found. And if these discoveries could help save lives, that's all the better. So in order to learn about research, I interned in a biology lab. And then, because I was interested in the power of computers, a computational lab. 
And it was there that I had the idea of applying this computer power to what I learned in the biological lab. And with so much news flying around about H5N1 and other deadly flu strains, I thought, why can't I use this computer power in order to speed up the discovery of new medicine for the flu? Now, as I began trying to visualize my research and what I'd actually do, search engines became my best friend as I learned about the flu and how I could fight it. As I started writing and modifying programs, they would often crash, and search engines were there for me as help and support. I was even able to take an online graduate-level course on drug discovery and development. What I found is that drug companies are currently using robots to test millions and millions of chemicals in order to find just a few that might actually become real flu medicine. What I was able to do is first add a preliminary step, repurpose computer programs to sift through these millions and millions of chemicals and just identify the top fraction that is most likely to work. In a sense, these computers were making an educated guess, and I was able to use biological testing in order to validate those guesses to find what actually worked. And from this, I was able to find a handful of new flu drug leads that I'm hoping to develop into real flu medicine. I felt lucky to have all of the different opportunities that I've had to attend all those different science fairs and symposia, and I really got to see what those teens out there are working on. Like a 13-year-old in Texas who used biomimicry in order to copy how squids move in water and then build a new underwater propulsion system out of that. Or two 14-year-olds in Swaziland that found a new hydroponic farming method that was more efficient for subsidence farmers in their area. Teens all over the globe are passionately working away at any topic imaginable. And because I had an opportunity to go to all of these events, I also wanted to go back and share this with other people. And so I began doing science research and brought new science fair mentorship programs to hundreds of kids in schools that had never participated in science fairs before, many of which had science programs that were underfunded. And just a few months later, I was absolutely blown away by what these kids were able to come up with. Many of these kids did not come from scientific households, yet they were working away from topics from the aerodynamics of plane wings to mental disabilities. One of the most beautifully crazy ideas that they came up with was a girl who decided it made sense to plant seeds inside cacti. So as the seedling was growing out of the cactus, it would get a constant source of nutrients from the cactus flesh. It's just so beautifully unconventional. And of course, many ideas won't work. They're just not practical. But because they're so unique, so different, the ones that do have the ability to dramatically change the way we go through our everyday lives. One constant through all of my research, or my outreach, was that these kids, unexposed to the idea that they could do real research, surprised even themselves with what they are able to come up with. Many times, it seems like we're spending more time putting up with problems than actually going out and solving them. For this, maybe our youth can teach us the best lesson. We need to stop viewing problems as problems, but rather as solutions that have not yet been discovered. We amateurs show that you don't have to have a PhD or be a professional in order to contribute or make discoveries. In fact, it can be your greatest advantage. We have reached a time where if we believe we can make a change, we really will be able to. Now, in the tipping point of discovery, all we have left to do is modify our mindsets, and this small but profound change will leave us free to tinker, contribute, and even revolutionize.